Um, Pedro, thanks for thanks for coming, man. It's uh, it's always great to see you. I've been a big fan of your wines for a long time. I've been a big fan of drinking wines with you for an even longer time, and um, uh, it's just great to have you here in London to, to join us for the episode. So, um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about uh, Valde Capucha and um, what you're up to and, uh, what, and what you brought for us? Thanks for the invitation. It's really a pleasure to be to be here. Um, so. Uh, Capucha starts um, not long ago, so it's a project uh, uh, me and my my brother, with the help of my my dad and my mother. Uh, so we refunded the company, I mean the the, the estate, uh, ten years ago by um, switching uh, the, the the agriculture mode. So before uh, f we are fourth generations, uh, and back in the time we were producing. Uh, uh, I would say uh, conventional wine uh, uh, in, a, in a different agriculture uh, uh, practices with different agriculture practices and now uh, we've definitely moved uh, towards the, the, um, the expression of the terroir and for that we had to um, we had to change the, 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 the vineyards uh, we, we replanted the whole uh, plots the whole area uh, and we came back to the to the um, uh, real uh, traditional grapes. So, uh, unfortunately, during the the 50s and the 60s, there was there was a high demand uh, for the wines to, ex to export mainly to 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 Africa, to, to ex Portuguese colonies, and uh, our region there was there was a change for um, uh, clones uh, that were high healed uh, crossings, hybrids, and our estate was, um, uh, at that time, uh, uh, was producing uh, that kind of wines. Uh, and we, what we did was to uh, go back to the to the to the tradition and replant the plots with Arinto and Fernão Pires uh, and Castellão, and now uh, we are producing again the the true wines from the DOC. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, what, what, you brought one today, why don't you uh, oh. pull it up and let's uh, see what you got. Okay, so what we have here, it's um, an Arinto. So it's uh, a, single, a single vineyard uh, Arinto, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the best parcels uh, that we can identify now um, uh, quality year by year, vintage by vintage. And this is a, um, a rinto from San Jose Parcel, uh, aged uh, for 30 months. So it's kind of a, a benchmark for me. Awesome. So. It's a bit nice color. What I love about your wines is, and maybe it's just because I know where, where you're based, but they always have this unmistakable kind of sea breeze quality, right? I mean, I can <laughs> feel that kind of um, the saltiness and the brininess of the wines is always something that I, I really like about them. I mean, just maybe to, to people who don't know, know your wines, just talk about where you're located too and kind of like the, the dramatic terroir you have, because it's a bit, it's not what people think of when they think of um, Portuguese wine necessarily. Right. Yeah, the, the, there's an idea. Um, of Portugal uh, uh, being just just Mediterranean um, influence, uh, so the most known regions uh, are in fact um, warm, uh, dry, such as the Douro, for example. But there, Portugal is is it's it's a patchwork. Uh, it is it is the country with the, with the biggest uh, vine area per uh, territory. So we speak about vineyards uh, everywhere uh, so when you cross the country um, and we are in the coastal uh, area which is quite long so we can we can observe vineyards from north to south uh, in the coast um, uh, very uh, easily and we are located uh, only eight kilometers from the ocean but in a in a piece of land which is uh, little like 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 a, a big peninsula so we get influence from the, the, the winds, uh, the, the major winds come from the ocean, so it's north, north uh, west, um, and they bring uh, very cold temperatures, they bring humidity, um, and we uh, are 
rather uh, Atlantic than, than Mediterranean. Uh, so um, we can say that these new terroirs, which were new to the world, uh, they've been there forever, but not, not being shown probably um, in the right uh, way or with the right intensity. Um, and there's a lot to discover because the orography, it's very uh, dramatic. So you have, you have no plains, uh, uh, no uh, flat lands um, in, in, in the area. So it's always hilly, uh, and that brings the diversity of the soil, uh, diversity of the exposure, uh, the microclimate. So it's, it's very, very interesting. So we can pair um, Lisbon region a bit like, like the Loire. So you, you, you can definitely um, search uh, and definitely find uh, rather interesting red wines, uh, uh, white wines. There's, uh, excellent conditions for sparkling, but uh, well, the potential is there. Uh, we just need the most important thing, uh, which is the mines. So we still lack uh, mines to to explore the the, the terroir. So and so, I mean, you've been coming to Real Wine Fair for a few years. Um, is this is it kind of like one of the places where you you find there's a bit of receptiveness to those ideas? That are, are you, maybe just talk about like your experience here at the Real Wine Fair. Um, you know, working with Le Cab or just in the London market in general? Yeah. Uh, the, the good thing about this market, which is very, very matured, um, what, I, what, I, what I feel, uh, it's that people, people are interested what they have in the glass. So everything starts by the tasting, and, um, and, then, the, and then all the, the story is, is composed. So it doesn't matter if I'm coming uh, from a, 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 a very known place or, uh, or whatever. Uh, if the wines are uh, expressive, um, I think a producer can, can establish. So that, that happened with me. So DOC Torres Vedras, uh, it's completely unknown to the wine world. Uh, but uh, being, uh, being quite... Uh, uh, I would say uh, truthful with your work and doing what you have to do in order to have quality. Uh, people will understand and will drink your wine definitely. Mm -hmm. And and I think London still is um, the wine capital in in, in Europe. Uh, it's still very strong in in being a hub for 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 the world, and it's really. Uh, to me, it was very, very important to, to backpack uh, uh, my wines uh, six, seven years ago and come here to visit some friends and give the, the wine to taste uh, in bars and, and, and restaurants. And from that, uh, uh, everything started. So meeting, meeting Doug Reich uh, at Terroirs was a very important moment in my, my, my career, I can say that uh, really uh, brought us uh, the opportunity to show the wine in the world and real wine fair um, is, a, is a big spear uh, in the land for us. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I love, and one of the things I love about this show that we try to do too is um, you know, celebrating the people behind it and, and celebrating the celebration of wine, I guess, for lack of a better word, right? And uh, wine, you know, I think, um, People think about winemakers and, and, what, and their wine and all of the time it goes into it, but I think it's also really exciting to just see people who produce wine as people who love wine. Um, and you know, I know that we share a lot of passions about similar wines. Like, is there stuff that you've tasted here today that you, or you know, the uh, producers in the room at the festival that you that you get really excited about? Um, yeah, absolutely. As a, as a wine drinker. Absolutely. Um, I remember um, yeah, because it's in front of me. Uh, in the room, uh, Andreas Chepem, and his, um, his uh, ability to bring um, the, the real quality of certain uh, grapes, uh, for example, the Sauvignon Blanc, and uh, the, the level of maturity he can, he can reach without uh, losing the character, it's amazing. So um, I think it's one, one Great! Uh, it's not a discovery because I, I had the opportunity to visit him in, uh, last December in Carotere, 
and I was amazed by the, the, the precision of his work and, and his brother, Herwald. So I think they are both uh, um, great inspiration mm -hmm. as well. I was gonna, well, I mean, maybe we should talk a bit about your Arinto kind of on the back of that because this has a, some similar qualities of intensity and depth to both of those guys' wines. Um, yeah. tell, us bit, tell us about this wine. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, it's so it's so concentrated, it's so dense, but it's so saline and yeah, it's just really it's precise but powerful at the same time. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? It's just it's yeah. a really it's a it's a really complex, beautiful wine that stays in your mouth and like the finish is very ethereal, the retronasal. Um, aromas are just really quite haunting. I guess for lack of a better word, it's just a. You know, I'm a I've you know, it's 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 pretty serious <laughs> wine, man. It's, it's wine yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think this this cuvee is particular uh, um, interesting because you know, a white wine, uh, a white wine can be really uh, powerful and 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 at the same time. Uh, being matured, uh, being uh, long, uh, as much as a red wine. So um, this wine for me, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, drinking some of the Jura wines, uh, uh, the Ouye wines for me, uh, uh, was important to understand that the limestone and the neutral varieties um, have need some time in the winery. Uh, uh, so this, uh, the cellaring of this wine is very important and, and, and we have a reward in the end. So I, I make this, is, uh, it's not minuscule, minuscule, but it's almost minuscule production, this wine, uh, because I'm not able to uh, keep the wine so long. Uh, so it, this is aging um, process of 30 months. Um, but the result is stunning, so I, I'll keep um, uh, a small part of the production every year uh, in order to to achieve this level of complexity mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's great I mean that that kind of comparison to these um, great Ouya wines is uh, is really helpful I think for people who've not tasted this wine before because it's just so powerful and mm -hmm. ethereal at the same time um, yeah it's stunning man <laughs> Um, so what's you know well, like I love the reduction so mm. uh, this um, some some producers some some regions um, can achieve uh, a delicious uh, uh, mind blowing reduction I think this one has that that as well mm -hmm. so that brings energy that brings um, uh, like a um, like a or organic. Uh, uh, kind of dimension yeah. to the wine, which is uh, which is appealing. But I think so. what's really important to and kind of, for people listening or like watching to know to know about that, as you say that, is that it's still so smooth. It's at such great equilibrium on the palate that that reduction isn't hiding the wine. You can feel it there in the kind of in the in the in the in the posture of the wine. You can feel that how it's constructed in, around this, but it's still so silky and so so open and, and, and there's no tingle there's no prickly kind of like in this closed off wine it's still just incredibly balanced and i think that mm -hmm. that is you see people are really going for that reductive quality that that can maybe um hide the, hide, hide the terroir just, yeah man, i just love this wine yeah um, yeah uh, and and 15 vintage is is one of those vintage uh um uh, you know consider slightly warm uh mm -hmm. That's um, with, for the aging process. Sometimes um, uh, it works. So, uh, so the, the there was there was some there was some concentration in the end of the maturation that was due to the to the, the to the warm um, uh, climate, um, and that brought uh, high levels of acidity. So uh, we had to pick the grapes uh, because the sugar levels were were going up um, and there was some extra acidity uh, still to be uh, uh, processed and that brought uh, uh, some austerity to the 2015 vintage so the the, the normal bottlings um, were wines uh, a bit difficult in the beginning but now they are developing mm. and for this kind of aging uh, it was brilliant so uh, so good um, I could drink this whole bottle. Um, <laughs> it's pretty like indulgent, <laughs> indulgent sip. Um, what, what else are you drinking? What else are you drink lately? 
Uh, well, I've been uh, I'm very good, very good fork and palate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like, but I am. Um, well, I drink. I mean, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a Sierra fanatic a bit. Uh, so I know this about uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I like. Uh, I really like the the. The, the 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 texture and 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 the fruits uh, that that the northern round can can deliver so the the maturity the smoothness but also the lightness so I'm kind of struck by those wines so mm. um, not so fan of the whites uh, I still have to discover the the great northern Rhone white, white but the reds uh, blow yeah. blow my mind yeah when you talk when you talk about the kind of um researching the kind of Ouye style and how they um, in Jura. Is there anybody that really inspires you from there that you try to not emulate, but that you say, wow, they really handled that delicate tightrope brilliantly? Well, uh, there's many, many growers which I uh, uh, drink the wines uh, and love. Uh, maybe I'll speak about uh, the last last bottles of Jura wine. I'll, I'll s tell you about uh, Francois Rousset Martin. He has a he has a cuvee, a Chardonnay, uh, Ouillet Chardonnay, which is I don't want. Uh, I think it's Marne Blanche. I'm not sure uh, if the name is that that cuvee. It's striking the the level of maturity, yet the freshness that the wine has. Uh, uh, that that's very important, and and it's an it's a topic, it's an issue that uh, uh, in Portugal we discuss that a lot, uh, which is the true minerality uh, of a wine. True minerality is only achieved when the maturity is complete mm. and it's done, and not before. So there is sometimes um, uh, uh, an intention of producing a mineral wine or uh, um, something with with a with a um, elegance, but not waiting for the grapes. So early picking and early picking uh, can be uh, real real trouble uh, for the for the wines now, uh, uh, as the late picking was 15, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so um, sometimes I taste some wines which are. A little bit unripe. Uh, they are, of course, mineral uh, because the, there is no fruit there. You know, so that's 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 a topic, uh, mm -hmm. hot topic for discussion, which is the maturity. Well, I talk about the Rousseau Martin wines because they're brilliant. I the cuvée, first time I had the cuvée de Mon Professeur, which I think is a Sauvignon, it's Ouillet, but they just have this, and, and I think you, you achieve uh, in a different way, obviously, your own wine, a very similar kind of balance of that, very you know long, stable, um, controlled maturation process. I don't want to say oxidative aging because I don't want to imply the wrong effect hmm. because the wine's incredibly clean, incredibly crystalline, um, just as Rousseau Martin's wines are. And I think that that kind of, um, I, the way you put it to describe the acidity and like that, to the minerality to come up as a, at, at maturity is, is a, you don't hear that often. And so I think um, yeah. it's good yeah. to kind of have that yeah. perspective. So. Yeah. Man, this, this I love I love full mature uh, white wines uh, like the Styria, the wines from Styria. I I really I'm a fan because I find them really more mature and balanced probably than the the, the Camptal wines or yeah. whatever. So do you have a hard time? In, I mean, in Portugal, kind of communicating what you're trying to do with the wine because it must be very different from like what the reference point are for like most Portuguese people. Or yeah, uh, well, it's or changing maybe. now. Uh, over the last three years, uh, five years, probably there, there there are more awareness for 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 our wines. But in the beginning, it was difficult uh, to convince the sommeliers. Uh, the Portuguese sommeliers uh, were uh, still attached to to a bear, uh, quite old-fashioned way of uh, drinking wine. And and me, um, I find that a problem because I. I I always wanted from the beginning to search for, for um, expression, uh, so of the soil of, of the vintage, uh, rather than, than a winery expression. Mm -hmm. So um, it was hard to to get them to to taste the wine sometimes, um, but not here. 
So that's why I backpack <laughs> right. and, and stay at Big L's, for example, uh, and um, knocked at doors and, and gave to taste. And every, everybody was um, willing to taste. So that's, that's the beginning. In Portugal, um, eight, eight years ago, more or less, uh, sometimes you not even could reach the sommelier because uh, they were having lunch or having whatever. Uh, it's funny, we hear this from so many people today, kind of like what it was like emerging in, the, in their domestic regions and being against the grain and, and that you know, the first home that a lot of these people found for their wines was in the UK or at festivals like this. And so, I mean, it's just another kind of testament to, uh, as a cheers to Doug for bringing cool people together, some cool wine, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. But man, th this is great. This wine is absolutely stunning. Um, you can definitely top me up a little bit more. Um, I, I'll, I'll do my best to avoid drinking the whole bottle and share some of it <laughs> with uh, the guys behind the camera. But um, no, man, I think I think your wines are stunning. I think if anybody who's listening or watching hasn't tried them, then they definitely need to get out and get some bottles because I think uh, all of your whites and, and you know your reds are incredibly uh, enchanting as well. But but the whites are something that I, I think are, are are real gems from Portugal. So um, Good to see you as always, and um, thanks for bringing some cool wine down. Thanks, mate. Thanks for the invitation. It was really good. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs>